wakunywe pia damu yangu Jesus said Yesu akasema Those who want to follow me must eat my flesh and drink my blood Wale wanaotaka kunifuata lazima wale mwili wangu na wakunywe pia damu yangu Jesus said Yesu akasema Those who want to follow me must eat my flesh and drink my blood Wale wanaotaka kunifuata lazima wale mwili wangu na wakunywe pia damu yangu Jesus said Yesu akasema Those who want to follow me must eat my flesh and drink my blood Wale wanaotaka kunifuata lazima wale mwili wangu na wakunywe pia damu yangu Jesus said Yesu akasema Those who want to follow me must eat my flesh and drink my blood Wale wanaotaka Jesus is Lord Amen. Kwa hivyo tunachukua fursa nyingine ama nafasi nyingine tena kukukaribisha rasmi ya kwamba karibu katika ibada yetu ya jioni ya leo vile nilivyokuwa nimekukaribisha hapo asubuhi kwa morning devotion ya kwamba leo huwa tunakuwa na ibada ya kukamilisha maombi yetu. Maana leo ni siku ya maombi na vile tulisifu na kuabudu asubuhi na kuomba pamoja niko na imani ya kwamba Bwana amekutenda jambo katika maisha yako. Welcome, welcome once more again to our Nyokonyo Studios. We are live and today I believe that the man of God is again going to speak to us powerfully according to the word of God and the spirit of God. Amen. So welcome wherever you are. You can tag your friend, you can welcome somebody. You can tell somebody also to follow our page or our group Mary Nyokonyo official Mary Nyokonyo foundation Mary Nyokonyo band and all that in Facebook Hallelujah and I believe that at the end of this sermon we are going to be blessed Last week we were blessed Hallelujah and it has really carried us since that week up to today we thank God because the man of God was talking about the lukewarm church. The lukewarm church. Perhaps it's your first time to pray with us today. My name's are Pastor Mary Nyokonyo of River of Life Christian Fellowship International. The lukewarm church. And today, he is again still dwelling on churches. So we are looking at the faithful church of God. Who is you? Not only Philadelphia, but also you as a faithful church of God. Praise the Lord. As our God remains to be faithful, so do we also desire to remain faithful each and every day. And I thank God because when Paul was speaking to the church of the Corinthians, he said to the sanctified church of Corinthians who are being made holy. So as we have that desire to be made holy, to be washed, to be cleansed every day, today the man of God is here with your word, with my word. And I believe that you are prepared to receive this word in a mighty way. Hallelujah. May the spirit of God speak to you. May the Spirit of God reveal to you, enlighten you more as we continue to receive the word of God. So I want to pray before I welcome the man of God to give us the word. Natamani ya kwamba roho mtakatifu atudumie siku leo katika kiwango cha juu. Tuimbe nyimbo za sifa vile tulivyo imba subui katikati ya majaribu, katikati ya mateso. Tuimbe nyimbo za sifa. Hallelujah. Na naamini ya kwamba unaimba wimbo wa sifa. God has given me a testimony. Na nilikuambia ya kwamba we are determined to receive testimonies. Nilipoondoka nikaenda kazini mwangu afisina breakthrough, a mighty breakthrough. So I'm believing God that you also 
kwa sababu leo tulikuwa tunaimba kama Paulo na Sila katikati ya mateso we were singing hymns na tukaimba zaburi moja hamsini. haleluya uhimidhiwe bwana enzini mwako uhimidhiwe kwenye mbingu haleluya tukamsifu bwana na tukasema kwamba Paulo na Sila waliimba zaburi maandiko nasema kwamba waliimba zaburi na wewe na mimi tukianza kuimba zaburi kuanzia mwanzo tukifika mia moja na hamzini malango yenyewe yanafunguka na kwa kweli nimeona malango yakifunguka mbele yangu na mshukuru Mwenyezi Mungu you have a testimony in our church we have received a testimony katika kanisa letu na nashukuru Mungu i have received a testimony personally kwa kazi yangu na najua kwamba mtumishi wa Mungu hayuko hapa bure things are happening amen mambo yanatendeka wacha tuamini na tuombe kisha ni wakaribisha watumishi wa Mungu watupatie neno la Bwana baba Mungu katika jina la Yesu Kristo tunakushukuru kwa umbali ambao umetuleta wengi ninajua kwamba wameimba wimbo wa sifa hata katika mafungo katika kujinyema kwa siku hii ya leo wameimba wimbo wa sifa wanapoonekana na wanadamu wanaonekana kuwa watu ambao wamekaa wakikula kuanzia asubuhi na ile hali wamenyima mwili chakula baba kwa sababu ya utukufu wako patia watu wako ushuhuda wa kushuhudie leo na pia vile mtumishi wa Mungu anaenda kunena nasi vile Paulo alivyonena na kanisa lililokuwa kanisa aminifu la Philadelphia naomba kwamba siku hii ya leo wacha Mungu mtumishi wako ukamtumie akanene nasi tukae katika uaminifu wako na kama kuna kitu kinachotuzuia katika uaminifu baba ukakiondoe maana tunatamani kuona ukuu wako na uaminifu wako baba katika maisha yetu winuliwa hata kwa ajili ya mtumishi wako unapoenda kumtumia wacha akafanyike chombo kwa ajili ya kanisa lako la leo Asante mtakatifu pamoja na mkalimani wake ukapate kuwatakasa vinywa vyao vikatumike kwa ukuu na uaminifu wako winuliwe bwana na utukuzwe kwa jina la Yesu Kristo tunaomba na hata kuamini sema amen nashukuru Mungu kwa hivyo nataka kuchukua nafasi hii ili niwakaribishe watumishi wa Mungu ambao wako pamoja nasi kwa ajili ya neno la siku ya leo karibuni watumishi wa Mungu na Mungu awabariki sana haleluya I want to take this uh, wonderful day and opportunity to welcome you all. Nataka kuchukua siku ya ajabu na fursa kuwakaribisha ni nyote. My name is Harrison Adea. Majina yangu ni Harrison Adea. My interpreter is Johnston Barasa. Na mkelimani wangu ni Johnston. We thank God so much because of this opportunity. Tumshukuru Mungu sana kwa sababu ya fursa hii which God has given unto us that we may come together and share the word. Baba Bwana ametupatia ili tuje pamoja tukashiriki neno. It is because of his grace we are here. Ni kwa sababu ya neema yake tu tuko hapa. And the love of God has still united us so that we can be together through this service of online. Na neno la Mungu limetunganisha bado kwa pamoja ili tukaweze kuwa katika mitandao hizi tukilileta neno hili. So we request you just to give us a moment of short time. Kwa hivyo utakuomba tu tupe muda wako mchache so that we can share the word of God together. Tukaweze shiriki neno la Mungu kwa pamoja. Last week I was talking about the lukewarm church. Juma lopita nilikuwa nazungumzia kuhusu kanisa lililofugu fugu that was the laodicea church na ni kanisa la lodokia where uh, john the apostle was given the revelation and the message specifically to that church ambako yohana anapewa ujumbe na ufunuo hasa kwa kanisa hilo and so he was writing specifically to the church of laodicea na hivyo hasa kiwa anaandika kwa kanisa la lodokia now according to what we saw Lingana na kile tuliona we realize that when god blesses you tulitambua kwamba mungu anapokubariki you don't allow the blessings and the miracles to rule you but god must still rule you wezi ruhusu miujiza na kazi anayofanya mungu zikutawale lakini 
unamruhusu Mungu akutawale. When God has satisfied you and given you all things, you don't desert him and continue ruling yourself. Mungu anapokushibisha na pia kupatie vitu vyote, uwezi mwacha na uanze kujitawala mwenyewe. You have to be known. Ni lazima ujulikane. Where you belong. Ambako uliko. Whether you are a believer or you are not a believer. Uwe mumini ama wewe siyo mumini. Today I'm going to talk about the church of Philadelphia. Leo na sugumzia kusu kanisa la Philadelphia. The Philadelphia church. Kanisa la Philadelphia. And the Philadelphia church. Na kanisa hili la Philadelphia. Is a church that was named. Uh, uh, it was named. Ni kanisa mbalo litajua. And it's a, uh, it was uh, the city that was named for Atalas the second. Kwa Atalas wapili. Atalas the second Philadelphus. Atalas wapili wa Philadelphus. Who lived in a place called Pergamum. Ambaya liishi katika eneo ambalo lilikuwa linaitwa Paridadam. In honor of his uh, loyalty to his elder brother who was called uh, Eumenes. Kwa, u, kwa, 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 kwa upole na heshima ya ndugu yake ambaye alikuwa naitwa Eumenes the second. Eumenes wa pili. Who had uh, ruled before him. Aliyekuwa ametangulia kutawala kabla yake. So Philadelphia was a place that was named after someone. Kwa hivyo Philadelphia ikawa ni sehemu ambayo ama uh, eneo ambalo lilitajwa baada ya mtu. Was named after the king. Ili tajwa baada ya mfalme. We realize that there is a lot of things that the angel of God is, uh, uh, is being given here. Na tunatambua kwamba pana vitu vingi ambazo malaika wa mungu wanapewa hapa. Revelation chapter number 3 and verse 7. Uh, ufunuo mlango wa tatu msari ule mdogo wa saba. Bible says unto the angel of the church in Philadelphia. Na biblia nasema kwa malaika wakanisa la Philadelphia. To the angel of the church to the uh, uh, Philadelphia. Kwa malaika wakanisa la Philadelphia. And the word Philadelphia there. Na neno Philadelphia pale. Is a very unique word. Neno la kipeke. And according to the Greek translation. Kulingana na tafsiri ya kigiriki. It means brotherly love. Ya manisha ule upendo wa kindugu. Phila means brother, uh, 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 love. Uh, fila ya manisha upendo. And then Adelphia, Adelphos means brother. Na Adelphos ya manisha ndugu. So that is to mean they were people sharing the same, uh, the, the, the same father. Na iyo ya manisha walikuwa ni watu walokuwa na shiriki baba moja. And he says, Ma anasema, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, Anasema kwa malaika wakanisa pale Philadelphia, It was written for, uh, to the angel, the messenger that was leading that church during that time. Inanakiliwa hasa kwa malaika liekua anaongoza kanisa kwa wakati uo. This thing says he that is holy. Maneno haya asema yeye alie mtakatifu. The holy one of Israel was the one speaking these words, not John himself. Mtakatifu wa Israeli ndia na esungumza maneno haya siyo Yohana mwenyewe. He that is true. Ye aliye wa kweli he that hath the key of david ye aliye na fungu ya daudi he that openeth and ye, no man shutteth ye afunguae na hapana mwanadamu anayeweza kufunga and shutteth and no man openeth na ye anayefunga na hapana mwanadamu anayeweza kuifungua. The, the words you hear here is John trying to describe the person that gave him the message. Maneno unayosikia hapa ni Yohana anajaribu kuelezea zaidi mtu aliyempatia ujumbe. The glorious father, the true God of Israel. Baba wa utukufu, Mungu wa kweli wa Israeli. And he says he that has the 
keys of David. Anasema yeye aliye nafunguza Daudi. We I'm going to uh, to explain much about the keys of David. Na kwenda kuelezea zaidi kuhusu funguo za Daudi. From the book of Isaiah. Katika kitabu cha Isaiah. So that we can get to understand. Ili tukapate kujua. The, the the reason why he's saying he that has the keys of David. Sababu inamfanya Yohana kusema yeye aliye nafunguza Daudi. He saw the one that was talking having the keys of David. Aliona yeye aliyekuwa anasungumza akiwa nafunguza Daudi. He that openeth and no man shutteth. Yeye afungwae na hapana mwanadamu wa kufunga. And shutteth and no man openeth. Na yeye afungae hapana mwanadamu wa kufungua. And now after describing the person na sasa baada ya kuelezea kuhusu mtu in verse number 8 katika mstari wa 8 wa ufunuo mlango wa 3 Jehova is now revealing to John this Sasa Jehova Mungu anafunua haya kwa Yohana He says I know thy works Anasema najua kazi yako I know thy works Najua kazi yako And now when he talks about there Na sasa anaposhumza kuhusu pale He's telling John to tell them Anamwambia Yohana awambieni I've been looking with my eyes and I've seen everything you have been doing Nimekuwa nikitasama kwa macho yangu na nimeona vyote mlivyokuwa mnavifanya I have been doing an observation of everything you have been doing as a church in Philadelphia Nimekuwa natasamia kila kitu ambacho mmekuwa mkikifanya katika kanisa la Philadelphia That is to tell you that everything thing and every work that we do our lord is watching hiyo ni kukueleza kwamba kila kitu tunachokifanya basi mungu wetu wa mbinguni anakiona he is saying i know he is using the greek word oida he is saying i am aware i understand it anatumia neno la kigiriki oida kumaanisha nina ufahamu ninajua i know everything i have known everything that you have been doing najua kila kitu na nina ufahamu hamu kila kitu umekuwa mkikifanya and this is to tell them basi ini kuwajulisha i can discern i can discover i can see what is happening ninaweza kuona ninaweza kufahamu chote chote kile ambacho mwakifanya that is to tell you that philadelphia church was involved in a certain particular job that the lord was talking about hiyo ni kumaanisha kanisa la philadelphia ilikuwa imejihusisha katika kazi hasa ambayo mungu alifahamu na akawa naisungumzia and again we are going to see the work that the philadelphia church was doing na pia tena tunaenda kuona kazi ambayo kanisa la Philadelphia lilikuwa linafanya. He says behold. Anasema tasama. See. Ona. See. Ona. I have set before thee an open door. Nimeeka mbele zenu mlango ulo wazi. And no man can shut it. Na hapana mwanadamu awezae kuifunga. For thou hast a little strength. Maana mna nguvu kidogo and had kept my word na mmetunza maneno yangu and had not denied my name na hawajalikana jina langu what is god telling john here basi ni lipi mungu anamwambia yohana hapa i have seen their labor nimeona kazi yao as the church how they have been laboring kama kanisa vile wamekuwa wanaifanyia kazi and behold i have made an open door before them na tisama nimeweka mlango ulo wazi mbele zao and no man can shut it down na hapana mwanadamu awezaye kuifunga no man can shut it hapana mwanadamu anayeweza kuifunga for thou has little strength maana ana nguvu chache but thou has kept my name my word my word na pia ame 
Tunza neno langu. And hath not denied my name. Na hajalikana jina langu. So what I want you to know is this. The Lord is aware of what we are doing. Mungu anafahamu wa kile tunafanya. You may feel forgotten. Unaweza hisi umesahaulika. And you may feel like no one is uh, no one knows what you are doing. Na unaweza hisi hapana mtu anafahamu kile unachofanya. In church a lot of people do a lot of things and no one has ever recognized them. Katika kanisa watu wanafanya mambo mengi na hapana mtu amekwisha watambua. No one has ever commented about the work they are doing. Hapana mtu amekwisha sema jambo kuhusu kazi wanalo, wanazofanya. Even if the people have not seen what you are doing, our God sees what you are doing. Hata kama watu hawajaona yale unayafanya, basi Mungu wetu amekwisha ona kile unafanya. Even if pastor has not recommended about you but the Lord knows what you are doing. Hata kama mchungaji hajasema lolote kukuhusu Mungu anafahamu unachokifanya. And he says I have set before thee an open door. Na anasema nimeweka mbele zako mlango uliowazi. And no man can shut this door up. Na hapana mwanadamu aliye na uweza wa kufunga mlango huu. Now let me come to what uh, jo- John John was describing here. Sasa wacha nije kwa kile ambacho Yohana alikuwa anajaribu kuelezea hapa. And he says he that has the keys of David. Anasema yeye aliye na funguo za Daudi. What God was telling John to tell this church. Kile Mungu alikuwa anamweleza Yohana awambie kanisa hili that God the God they were trusting in had power and authority. Kwamba Mungu ambaye walikuwa namwaminia yuna nguvu na mamlaka to open and to close kufungua na kufunga whatever he opens it remains open chochote anachofungua kinasalia kikiwa kimefunguliwa and whatever he closes it remain closed na chochote anachokifunga yeye basi kitasalia kimefungwa when you read the book of isaiah unaposoma kitabu cha isaiah isaiah chapter number 22 isaiah mlango wa 22 the one i want us to read there Nataka tusome pale so that we get to understand ili tukapate kufahamu Isaiah chapter 22 Isaiah mlango wa 22 you read you can read from verse uh, you can read from verse 13 uh, verse 22 unaweza soma kuanzia mstari wa 22 but uh, uh, we are you you, you, you Verse 15 not 22 verse 15 Unaweza kusoma wewe kwa wakati wako kuanzia mstari wa 15 But I'm only reading verse 22 Lakini nami nasoma tu mstari wa 22 I will place on his shoulder the keys to the house of David Nitaweka mabekani mwake funguo za nyumba ya Daudi What he opens no one will shut Kile atakachofungua basi hapana mwanadamu atakayefunga And what he shuts no no one will open na kile atakaye funga yeye hapana yeyote atakaye fungua now what does this mean basi hii yamaanisha nini when we read this article tunaposoma taarifa hii we realize that the lord was rebuking shebna tunaweza kuona kwamba mungu hapa alikuwa anamkemea shebna shebna was a, 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 was a servant in the house of ezekiah shebna ni mtumishi tu katika nyumba ya Isakaya and he was working together with Eliakim there naye akishirikiana pamoja na Eliakim pale now when we read about what happened there tunaposoma yaliyotukia pale Shebna was a servant of king Hezekiah Shebna ni mtumwa katika nyumba ya Ezekiah a servant uh, ni mtumishi both a steward over the household and a scribe too a uh, yeye ambaye alikuwa kielelezo katika nyumba ya Israeli. He was a scribe a learned person. Ni mtu ambaye alikuwa na masomo and he was also a servant in the house of Ezekiah. Na pia tena ni mtumishi katika nyumba ya Ezekiah. During his time, katika wakati wake, he never used his position well. Hakutumia nafasi yake vizuri. And this position that Shebna was having, na nafasi hii ambaye Shekna alikuwa na kwa an, 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 anakuwa nayo he was given to control everything and he was the commander who commanded to 
uh, the gate of the king or the doors of the king to be open and to be closed. Na alipewa nafasi hiyo kuamrisha kila kitu na pia alikuwa ni mwenye kuelekeza mlango ufunguliwe ama mlango ukafungwe. So it symbolizes general supervision over the king's business. Basi hiyo inaashiria kwamba alikuwa katika uangalizi katika biashara ya mfalme. The keys were placed upon his shoulder here. Basi funguo za wekwa mabekani mwake and as a symbol and specific of uh, authority over him kama ishara ya ya ya, u, ya, ya utawala juu yake the authority was conferred upon him to control the business of the house of the king basi utawala ukawekwa juu yake ili aelekeze vyote katika nyumba ya mfalme and it included specifically the authority to determine who are allowed to enter into the king's presence and into his service na mamlaka hiyo hasa sana ilikuwa ni kwa kutaka kujua nani anaingia katika maeneo ya mfalme na ni nani ataka, atakuwa anafanya nini pale but during his time as shemna na wakati wake hasa wa shemna there is a lot of things that shemna did in the house of ezekiah that made the lord to rebuke and to reject him pana mengi ambayo shemna alifanya katika nyumba ya ezekia ambayo ilimchochea mungu kumkemea and so he sending prophet isaiah na sasa anamtuma nabii isaiah so hapa. that he can prophesy and rebuke him and rebuke his mind about what he was boasting about ili akatoe unabii na akamkemea kemea mawazo yake kuhusu yale aliyokuwa anajifunia kuhusu shemna was ascribed a very learned person. Ashemna anakuwa hapa mtu, ni mtu hapa ambaye tunamwona msomi sana. But during and according to his position in the house of the king, lakini kulingana na nafasi yake katika nyumba ya mfalme, he was a person of selfish ambition. Alikuwa ni mtu aliye na ule ubinafsi. And he had he was a person who was looking for his own glory. Na ni mtu aliyekuwa anajitafutia utukufu yeye pride basi alikuwa ni mwenye kiburi sana and a man who loved to be honored na ni mtu aliyependa sana kuheshimiwa but in the other side lakini pia katika maeneo mengine eliakim's heart was turned towards god na eliakim umemgeukia Mungu So when we read from verse 15 to 22 tunaposoma kuanzia msari wa We realize how Shemna had prepared and planned about his future life. Tunaweza tambua vile Shemna alikuwa amejipangia kuhusu maisha yake ya baadaye. Shemna prepared even a, a place where he will be buried in a, in a highly esteemed manner. Ah uh, Shemna anatayarisha mahala pa kaburi yake na pia anatayarisha matanga yake katika hali ya kiheshima. Without knowing that they will be taken captive and go to Babylon and he will die there, he will be buried a shameful death. Bila, uh, bila kujua kwamba atashikwa apelekwe pale uh, uh, Bethlehem, Bethlehem na pia Babylon. Babylon na pia akufe pale na akufe kifo cha aibu kule. And his burial was very bad. Na kifo chake kikawa cha aibu sana. And now na sasa the Lord is taking over the keys the authority the office from him and is giving Eliakim the son of Hilkiah. Sasa Mungu anachukua funguo mamlaka heshima zote kutoka kwake na anapeana mwingine mwana wa elekia this was position of honor and responsibility basi hizi zilikuwa ni nafasi za heshima na majukumu and now it is being drawn out of him and is being given to eliakim sasa zaondolewa kutoka kwake na zinapeanwa eliakim who is eliakim eliakim ni nani hapa the son of hilkia ah mwana wa hilkia 
kuingia. Eliakim is a type of Jesus in the New Testament. Eliakim ni aina ya Yesu katika agano jipya. And he's the one that is being described there. Na ndiye anayeelezewa pale. He's being given the keys of the king. Anapewa funguza mfalme. And he's the only person who can authorize to anybody who will enter and anybody who cannot enter. Na yeye tu anayeweza kuamrisha mtu aingie na yule ambaye hapaswi pia kuingia. And so when El, uh, Eliakim was given about this keys, uh, wakati Eliakim wanapokea kuhusu funguo hizi, you read that in uh, uh, I will place on his shoulder the key to the house of David. Una soma kwamba nitaweka mabekani mwake funguza nyumba ya Daudi. What he open no one will shut. Basi atakachofungua yeye hapana mtu atakayefunga. And what he shuts no one will open. Na atakachofunga yeye hapana mtu atakayefungua. I will set him like a peg into a uh, secure place nitamuweka maeneo yaliyo salama like a peg a peg holds things uh, nitamuweka kama uh, kile chombo cha kushikilia vitu and he's going to hold so many things naye atashikilia vilivyo vingi he will become a throne of honor to his father's house atafanyika kiti cha heshima katika nyumba ya baba yake the entire reputation of his father's house will hang on him that is why he's he's, uh, he's being uh, said to be like a peg uh, marudio yote ya nyumba ya baba yake yatakuwa juu yake na ndio sababu anafananishwa na kile chombo kinachoshikilia vitu he's not going to be selfish like shebna basi yeye hatakuwa uh, mwenye 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 kujipenda kama shekina but he, the people will, will rely upon him lakini watu watamtegemea mtu asiyemchoyo yeye he's going to bring the entire reputation of his father's household Anaenda kuleta sura ya baba yake yote. The glory of his father's household. Utukufu wa nyumba ya baba yake. That was lost. Ba ilikuwa imekwishapotea. And he says it is offspring and of uh, offshoots all it is smaller vessel from the cups to all the jars. Basi anasema uzao wake wote utajazwa kwa jagi zote. At that time declares the Lord of the heavenly armies. Kwa wakati huo asema Bwana wa majeshi. The peg that was driven into a secure place will give way. Basi pegi ambayo ilikuwa imeelekezwa katika mahali palipo salama patapisha njia yake. Now what is he saying here? Anajaribu kusema nini hapa? John is telling us anatuambia uh, in the book of Revelation katika kitabu cha ufunuo that the one who is holding the keys of David told him that whatever he opens uh, kwamba yeye aliyeshikilia funguza nyumba ya Daudi And again we see that in the book of Revelation. Na tena tunaona hiyo katika kitabu cha ufunuo. And the book of Isaiah. Na kitabu pia cha Isaiah. So what are we saying here? Ni nini tunajaribu kusema hapa? He says he that is holding the keys. Anasema yeye ashikiliae funguo. God has the authority. Mungu yuna mamlaka. That he gave his son Jesus. Aliyempa mwanawe Yesu Kristo. And he is the one who determined and who to enter into the kingdom and who not to enter into the kingdom na kristo yesu ndiye muamusi kutaka kujua nani aingiae kwa ufalme na ni nani hapaswi kuingia he is the one that controls the business of the house that is called the church of god yeye ndiye yuko katika kuelekeza nyumba ya biashara ya mungu inayoitwa nyumba ama inayoitwa kanisa isaiah 9:6 says upon his shoulder there will be the God government uh, Isaiah uh, 9:6 inasema mabekani mwake patakuwa na serikali He was talking about Jesus Basi hapa anaashiria Yesu And Jesus is the one that has now brought in the government of heaven in the church Na sasa Yesu ndiye ameleta serikali ya mbinguni kwa kanisa 
and the church is being run by the government of heaven. Na sasa kanisa linaelekezwa na serikali ya mbinguni. We don't run the church the way we would wish to run. Hatutaelekeza ama hatuta ongoza kanisa vile tungependa kuongoza. The church has to portray and demonstrate the government of heaven here on earth. Kanisa linapaswa kudhihirisha, kuonyesha utawala wa mbinguni hapa duniani. So that the world can also understand. Ili dunia the world has its own government. And the church has the heavenly government. The church has the heavenly government. That is why John is saying that the one that was talking to me was the one that was holding the keys. The one that has the power authority over everything. He is the only who can say yes and the only who can say no. He that openeth and no man shutteth. He that openeth and no man shutteth. The Eliakim in Old Testament. Eliakim wa gano la kale. He was given authority in the house of Ezekiah. Alipewa mamulaka katika nyumba Ezekiah. And he controlled that house and made order to be restored in that house. Na alichukua wangalisi wa ile nyumba na kuleta mpangilio katika nyumba ile. Where is the order in the house of God? Basi mpangilio uko wapi katika nyumba ya Mungu? Who will bring honor in the house of God? Ni nani atarejesha heshima katika nyumba ya Mungu? The church is controlled with the spirit of Shebna. Ah kanisa linaongozwa na roho ya Shebna. The servants that are so selfish. Watumishi ambao ni wachoyo. The servants that are looking the human glory. Ah, watumishi wanaotafuta utukufu wa the servant that are a full of themselves. Basi watumishi ambao wamejipenda wenyewe. They are looking honor for themselves Wan, not the glory of God. Wanajitafutia heshima wenyewe sio utukufu wa Mungu. But the Bible is telling us. Na Biblia inatuambia. Isaiah was sent to tell them. Isaiah katumwa kuambia. That authority that you have it's going to be drawn out of you. Mamlaka mlionayo inakwenda kuondolewa kutoka kwenu. The keys that was given to you will be drawn out of you. And they are going to be given to the faithful servants. Na, kwa wa the people who can bring the glory to the name of God. The people who have the heart of God. Watu na moyo wa Mungu. And they can speak and do the things that God has instructed them to do. Wanaweza kusungumza na kufanya mambo aliyoamrisha Mungu wao kufanya. They will not use their office to manipulate anybody. Hawatatumia ofisi yao kuwachanganya watu. The church of Philadelphia. Kanisa la Philadelphia. It is a church ni kanisa that God says I know the work the labor you have been doing. Mbalo Bwana mwenye anasema najua kazi mnaifanya. And I have realized this. Na nimetambua hii. That is why God said I have made open doors before you. Na ndio sababu Bwana akasema nimefungua milango mbele zenu. Open doors before you. Milango zilizo First Corinthians chapter number 16 and verse 9 Paul says Because a great door for effective work has been uh, has opened to me kwa sababu mlango mkubwa wa kasi njema imefunguliwa mbele yangu and there are many who opposes me na pana wengi wanao nipinga paul was writing to the church of corinthians paul ananakili kwa kanisa la wa korinto he says because a great door for effective work has opened. Na anasema kwa sababu mlango mkuu umefunguliwa kwa sababu ya kazi njema. Why was God making this statement here? Kwa nini Mungu ananakili uh, ujumbe huu hapa? I have made an open door before thee. Nime Tengeza mlango lo wazi mbele zako. The open door was for them to continue laboring and doing the work that they were doing. 
basi mlango ulo wazi likuwa ni kwa wao kuendelea kuifanyia kazi na kuona kazi waliokuwa nafanya. And in first Corinthians that we have read. Na katika wa Korinto wa kwanza mlango wa 16 mstari wa 9 ambao tumesoma. There was so many openings about the preaching of the gospel in the life of Paul. Pakawa na malango mengi za kuhubiri kuhusu uh, ujumbe wa Paulo. But there was a lot of opposition in his preaching. Lakini palikuwa na upinzani mwingi katika mahubiri yake. Paul encountered a lot of difficulty and opposition when he went outside there to preach to the Gentiles. Paulo anakutanika na upinzani na ugumu mwingi alipoenda pale nje kuhubiria mataifa. That is why he says and there are many who opposes me. Ndio sababu anasema pana wengi wanaonipinga. The church of Philadelphia. Kanisa la Philadelphia. They were faithful believers. Walikuwa ni waaminio wenye uaminifu. Uh, that entrusted their faith in God. Ambao waliweka imani yao kwa Mungu. But they faced a lot of opposition from those who called themselves the Jewish and they are not Jewish. Wakapitia upinzani mwingi sana kwa wale waliokuwa na jita wa Yahudi lakini si wa Yahudi. They are that they called themselves the Jewish people but they were not the Jewish people. Walikuwa na jita wa Yahudi lakini kweli kabisa watu hawakuwa wa Yahudi. And listen to me. Sikiza mimi sasa. They had this they had, they, 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 they had raised this synagogue walikuwa wameinua sinagogi hizi and this synagogue was a place the, the, the uh, was supposed to be a place of worship na haya masinagogi yalikuwa yanapaswa kwa maeneo ya maabudu a place of reading and uh, learning the word of god mahala pa kusoma na kujifunza neno la mungu but they turned it around and made it a place of satan lakini wakaigeuza wakaifanya maeneo ya setani how many churches have been turned to a place of thieves. Uh, ni makanisa mangapi yamegeuzwa kuwa maeneo ya wezi. It should be a place of worship. Yanapaswa kuwa maeneo ya maabudu. Where people come and worship God. Bako watu wanaingia na kumwabudu Mungu. But things have been turned around. Lakini vitu vimegeuka. The people who call themselves the servants of God like these people but they are not servants of God. Watu wanaojita wenye watumishi wa Mungu kama watu hawa lakini wenyewe si watumishi wa Mungu. He says, anasema, they claim to be Jewish. Wana, wanasema wao ni Wayahudi. But they are not the Jewish. Lakini wao si Wayahudi. They say they are Jewish and are not. Wanasema ni Wayahudi lakini wao sio. How many people claim to be pastors and they are not? Watu wangapi wanajiita wachungaji lakini kweli si wachungaji? How many claim to be apostles and they are not? Wangapi wanajiita leo mitume lakini kweli sio? How How many call themselves teachers and they are not? Wangapi wanajiita leo walimu wa neno lakini kweli sio? And now this church. Na sasa kanisa hili. The Lord is saying I have opened the door to you. Bwana anasema nimefungua malango kwenu. I have seen the opposition. Nimeona upinzani. The difficulties. Ugumu. That you are facing. Unaopitia. Philadelphia were not so many people in church. Philadelphia hawakuwa wengi kanisani. It was a small church. Nili kwani kanisa dogo but they remain faithful to god lakini walisalia waaminifu kwa mungu the work that they did kazi waliofanya it was so powerful kwa ni yenye nguvu and when you read na unaposoma you realize unatambua the lord saw what they were doing bwana akaona walichokuwa wanafanya the church of philadelphia kanisa la philadelphia he saying i have opened the door to you anasema nimefungua mlango kwenu no one will shut hapana mtu wa kufunga ule mlango because the one with the keys Ma, of david maana yeye anafunguza daudi he is the final say yeye ndiye mwenye kusema and that is why paul is saying na no sababu paulo ananakili and there are many who opposes me kwamba pana wengi walio kinyume nami there will be so many opportunities atakuwa na tunuku nyingi so many openings basi milango nyingi so many things that god wants to do through you vitu vingi anazotaka mungu kufanya kupitia wewe expect to be opposed basi tarajia upinzani expect difficulties tarajia ugumu not everybody will be 
happy basi si kila mtu atafurahikia to let you fulfill your calling kuruhusu kutimiliza mwito wako to let you fulfill what god has told you to do kuruhusu kutimiza ambacho mungu amekuitia kukifanya but again listen to me na pia tena nisikize the opposition is not there to make you stop upinzani haupo pale kukusababisha wewe kukoma but to help you gain the momentum of doing it even better ah, lakini ni kukusaidia kupata fursa ya kuifanyia kazi vizuri zaidi second corinthians 2:12 wa korindo wa pili mlango wa pili msari wa 12 again paul says tena paulo ananakili na when i went to troas kwamba nilipoenda pale kwa troas to preach the gospel kuhubiri injili of christ ya kristo and found that the lord had opened doors for me na nikapata kuwa bwana amefungua mlango kwa ajili yangu when he went there alipoenda pale he went by faith alienda kwa imani but when he began preaching lakini alipoanza kuhubiri he discovered it was the lord who had opened the door for him to be there to preach alitambua kwamba ni bwana ndiye alifungua mlango kwa ajili yake akaweze kuhubiri i pray that the lord is going to open the doors of your ministry naomba kwamba bwana naenda kufungua malango ya huduma wako the doors of your business ah malango ya biashara yako the doors of your children malango ya watoto yako so that you can say as paul ili ukaseme sawia na paulo that when i found myself in the city of troas kwamba nilipojipata mwenyewe katika mji wa troas i discovered it was the lord who had opened that door nilitambua ni bwana aliyefungua mlango kwa ajili yangu every door that the lord has opened kila mlango ambao bwana amefungua may it remain open oh wacha isalie washi the doors of lying mlango wa flying abroad yako enda kule ngambo the doors of business mlango wa usafiri the doors of appointment mlango ya kupatana na watu the doors of your miracles basi mlango wa muujiza may they remain open wacha sikasalie washi and say like paul na useme sawia na paulo when i arrived there nilipofika pale i discovered it was the lord nilitambua alikuwa ni bwana who had done this aliyefanya haya when god is the one doing kama bwana no one will stop it. Basi hapana mtu wa kusimamisha. When the Lord is the one controlling. Bwana akiwa ndiye anaelekeza. Nothing will stop it. Basi hapana kitu cha kuizuia. They may bring obstacles. Wataleta vizuizi. They may bring bumps. Wanaweza leta vizuizi. They may create road blocks. Wanaweza weka upinzani pale njiani. But at the end. Lakini hatimaye. The Lord will take you through. Bwana atakupitisha kwayo. And you will find yourself there ajipata mwenyewe pale that is the god we serve huyo ndiye mungu tunayemtumikia when paul was writing to the church of colossians paulo anapona akili kwa kanisa la wakolosai chapter 4 and verse 3 mlango wa 4 mstari wa 3 wa kolosai he says i pray for uh, and pray for us anasema na muombe kwa ajili yetu i love this and na, pray for us napenda hii anasema na muombe kwa ajili yetu and pray for us too na mtuombe When you pray pray for the servants of God. Munapoomba ninyi ombeeni pia watumishi wa Mungu. Pray for those that God has anointed for his ministry. Ombeeni kwa sababu ya wale Bwana amewatia mafuta kwa ajili ya huduma wake. Pray for those people that God has ordained to stand in uh, in between the kingdom of God and the people. Ombea wale ambao Bwana amewasimamisha wasimame katikati ya mbingu na watu wake. And he says that God may I open a door for our message. Na anasema na Mungu afungue mlango kwa ajili ya ujumbe wetu. My prayer and my prayer today. Maombi yangu na maombi yangu leo. I pray that God may open the doors of message. Naomba Mungu afungue kwa mlango wa ujumbe. That this message we are preaching should go beyond the boundaries. Kwamba ujumbe huu tunaohubiri uende zaidi ya mipaka. Let God open more doors so that we can reach many people this message Mungu afungue malango ili tukawafikie watu wengi pitia ujumbe huu May the Lord open your doors of preaching so that you can reach many families Mungu afungue mlango wako wa kuhubiri ili ufikie jamii nyingi No more limitations Hapana uh, kupimiwa tena We are going beyond borders Tunaenda zaidi ya mipaka And Paul is saying Na Paulo anasema Pray for us too Mtuombe pia nasi That God may open open doors for our message ili bwana afungue 
so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ. Ili tukaweze kutangaza siri za Kristo. The mysteries. Siri za Kristo. They are mysteries they have not been revealed. Ni sile siri ambazo hasijawahi wekwa wazi. But they have been revealed to us by the Holy Spirit of God. Lakini zimewekwa wazi kwetu kupitia Roho Mtakatifu wa Mungu. So Paul is saying, Paulo anasema, pray that God may give us open doors that we may proclaim the the mysteries of Christ. Anasema ombeni ili Mungu atupatie milango iliyo wazi ili tukaweze kutangaza siri za Kristo. Listen to this somebody. Sikiza him too. Don't assume that everybody knows Christ. Usije kudania kwamba kila mtu anamfahamu Kristo. Knowing Christ is a revelation. Kumjua Kristo ni ufunuo. Christ is still a mystery to so many people. Kristo bado ni siri kwa watu wengi. Not all people understand who Christ is. Watu wengi hawajafahamu Kristo ni nani. That is why we need to proclaim him. Na ndio sababu tunahitaji kumtangaza yeye. So that he does not remain mystery to our generation. Ili asije salia siri kwa visasi vyetu. But they should know who he is. Lakini wakaweze mfahamu yeye ni nani. And who he has become. Na amefanyika nani. That is what the church of Philadelphia was doing. Basi hilo ndio lo kanisa la Philadelphia lilikuwa linafanya He says Anasema and he says I have opened doors Na nimefungua mlango No no one can shut Na hapana anayeweza kuvifunga For thou has a little strength Maana mko na nguvu kidogo Dunamis the little strength Dunamis nguvu kidogo And has kept my word Na wametunza neno langu The church of Philadelphia Delphia. Kanisa la Philadelphia. They kept the word of God. Walitunza neno la Mungu. The church was diligently doing study and reading and learning the word of God. Kanisa katika uangalifu walikuwa nasoma na kujifunza neno la Mungu. They were going through Bible studies and learning about who God is. Walikuwa napitia masomo ya kibiblia na kutaka kujua Mungu ni nani? Bible says, Bible inasema, I shall keep the word of God in my heart that I may not sin against him. <laughs> Basi nitaliweka neno la Mungu moyoni mwangu ili nisije mtenda dhambi tena. The church of Philadelphia kept the word of God. They hid the word of God in their heart. Ili kanisa la likaweka neno la Mungu ndani yao likakaa ndani ya mioyo zao. That is why they were not able to be defeated by the devil. Na ndio sababu wao hawakuweza kushindwa na shetani. Says I discover realize you have a little strength. Anasema nimetambua kwamba muna nguvu kidogo. And have kept my word. Nanyi mumeliweka neno langu. You are proclaiming it. Muna litangaza. You are saying it. Muna lisema. You are preaching it. Muna lihubiri. The church of Philadelphia. Kanisa la Philadelphia. They proclaim the word of God walitangaza neno la Mungu because there was open doors maana palikuwa na mlango uliowasi there was a lot of opening palikuwa na mianya mingi and when God opened the door of them proclaiming na Mungu alipofungua mlango wa wao kutangaza they proclaimed the message walitangaza ujumbe they preached the message walihubiri ujumbe although they, they, they the people looked at them as weak vessel ijapo watu waliwaangalia wakawatisema kama Viombo daifu. But Paul says Nae Paulo ananakili. He uses the weak to ashamed the strong. Kwamba anawatumia viumbe daifu kuaibisha venye nguvu. He used the church of Philadelphia. Alitumia ili kanisa la Philadelphia. The church that looked like the weak people. Kanisa liliyokuwa linakaa kama watu wanyonge wanyonge. The weak believers. Wale wadaifu wadaifu wa umini. But he is using their weakness to ashamed the strong kini anatumia ule udaifu wao kuaibisha wale wenye nguvu the world can know his word ili ulimwengu kaweza kujua neno lake the city of philadelphia can know that there is the one who is holding the keys of david ili muji wa philadelphia likajue kwamba kuna yule aliyeshikilia funguo za daudi how can people know the mysteries of jesus ni vipi watu watapata kujua siri za kristo 
like the church of Philadelphia. Kama kanisa la Philadelphia. We need to discover there is an open door. Tupaswa kutambua kwamba pana mlango ulio wazi. Of revealing the mystery of Christ. Wa kuweka wazi siri za Kristo. That the people may come to know. Ili watu wakaweze kujua. Who Jesus is. Yesu ni nani? The things he came to do. Vitu alivyokuja kuvifanya. The salvation of Jesus. Wokofu aliyokujia Yesu. That is what the church of Philadelphia was doing. Hiyo ndio kanisa la Philadelphia lilikuwa linafanya. They were very few. Walikuwa wachache. But they did a lot. Lakini walifanya zaidi. They were very weak. Walikuwa daifu. But they did great things. Lakini wakafanya malimbuko. Bible says. Biblia inasema. I can do all things. Naweza fanya mambo yote. Through him. Kwa kupitia yeye. Who strengthens me. Anitiae nguvu. The Holy Spirit is saying Roma I know you have little faith. Najua uko na imani ndogo. Paul is saying. Lakini Paul hapa anasema. Najua. I am aware. Na ufahamu. I can do all things. Naweza vifanya vyote. Through Christ Jesus. Kupitia Kristo Yesu. Who strengthens me. Anitiae nguvu. What he was telling this church. Alichokuwa anaambia kanisa hili. When you rely upon me. Unapoegemea kwangu. I am your strength. Basi mimi nafanyika nguvu. I am your ability I am going to make it happen Just trust me Because I have opened the door And he saying That he For thou hast a little strength And has kept my word And has not denied my name Listen to this The Philadelphia church They will not deny the name of Christ They will uphold his name How will this church uphold his name? Or how did they uphold the name of the Lord? One under persecution they will not shrink from identifying themselves as Jesus disciples they will not hide They will not shrink. Jikunja. But even under persecution. Lakini hata katika yale mateso, they cannot deny him. Bado hawawezi mkana Yesu. They will stand. Watasimama. Apostles of the gospel. Amitume wa injili. When they were beaten. Walipopigwa. And crushed. Na wakanyeteswa. And bleeded. Na wakamwaga damu. They said we are ready to die. Wakasema tu tayari kufa. Because of the gospel injili, the people with confidence watu na ujasiri, the church of philadelphia, la philadelphia it was a church kanisa, that was under persecution ambalo lilikuwa katika mateso under the attack katika ufamisi, from the false teachers kutoka kwa walimu wa wongo false Jewish people the people who rest the synagogue to attack them but they said we cannot deny our faith even if you are persecuting us even if you are persecuting us Nduki atumkani Yesu because we know kwa sababu tumejua that our God is with us kama Mungu wetu yu nasi and so they say na hivyo wakasema they will not deny his name hawataweza likana jina lake under persecution katika mateso they will not shrink or deny hawataweza kunjamana wala kukana they will identify themselves watajitambua wenyewe as the believers kama waumini as the true children of God kama wana How many people are trying to hide their identity for people not to say that they are born again? Watu wangapi wanajaribu kuficha kitambulisho chao cha kusema wameokoka? And they go secretively to the witch doctors and sorcerers and so-called prophets that are not from God. Na kwa siri wanahepa wakiingia kwa malengo ya kwa milango ya wachawi wa ganga na wale manabii wa uongo. Listen to this church. Sikiza hili kanisa. The Philadelphia 
Philadelphia Church. They will not uh, deny the name of the Lord. Why? They will not. They will. Uh, they will renounce a perverted form of teaching and gospel that is not from Christ. The polluted gospel, the polluted teaching, the things that are not of the spirit, they will reject it. They will not agree with those lies. Because they are not there to compromise their faith. And he says that I know Najua. that my word is in them and they will not deny my name and he says Nanasema, behold tisama, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan I will make them of the synagogue nitawafanya wale wa synagogue la shetani nitawafanya wawe synagogue la shetani wale wanaoabudu synagogue la shetani uh -huh. of satan which say they are jew and are not wanaosema wao ni wayahudi lakini sio but do lie lakini wao tena wanadanganya behold Tisama, i will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Nita wafanya, nita wasawabisha, wakimbie, wakuje, wainami na wabudu miguni mwenu, na wajue kwamba nini ni wa kuriso yesu. The church of Philadelphia was a loved church. Kanisa la kuriso. Philadelphia lilikuwa ni kanisa lilokuwa limependwa It was a loved church Lilikuwa ni kanisa ambalo limependwa And he says Anasema I will make those people who claim to be the Jewish and they are not they will come and worship where you are Kwamba nitawafanya hawa wanaojifanya wao ni Wayahudi lakini sio watakimbia waje na waabudu They will close their churches and come and worship at their feet Hallelujah watafunga makanisa yao na wakimbie waabudu chini ya miguu zenu. They will stop lying to people and start embracing the truth. Watakoma kuwadanganya watu na waje kukubatia ukweli. Those who despise the Philadelphia. Wale ambao wanadarau wa Philadelphia. The church of God will rise. Kanisa la Mungu litainuka. Against persecution. Kinyume na mateso yote. Beyond limitation. Zaidi ya vipimo and God is going to use them Na Mungu anakwenda watumie to bring the sanctity kulete ushafi and the truth na ukweli so that those people that were believing in lies ili waliokuwa wanaaminia katika uongo they can come and worship the king of king again waje na wamwabudu mfalme wa wafalme tena and verse 10 he says na msari wa 10 anasema because thou has kept the, uh, the word of na, my patience kwa sababu I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. And the Greek word there that means keep you, you from the hours of temptation. It can mean either two ways. To keep you from undergoing it. Kukuzuia kwa ku endelea kwayo kutopitia, kupitia or keep you through it ama akuwezeshe kupita kwayo so what god is telling them hivyo kile mungu anajaribu kusema kwa wao hapa because you have kept the pure gospel kwa sababu mmetunza injili kamili the church must keep the pure the true the sanity of preaching the gospel kanisa lina sima ni lazima likatunze injili ya kweli ushafi wa Chili. And he says I will keep you safe. Anasema nitawafanya kuwa salama from the hour of temptation and trial. Katika masaya majaribu God is capable of keeping you safe when you are undergoing through a situation. Mungu anaweza wakukuweka salama unapopitia hali. 
either he can prevent that situation or go through uh, the, he can allow you to go through it and you are still together with him anaweza kukuzuia kutokupitia katika hiyo hali ama akuwezeshe kupita katika hiyo hali na bado akuwe pamoja nawe the church of philadelphia kanisa la philadelphia they kept the word of god walilitunza neno la mungu they remain faithful to the true gospel walizalia waaminifu katika injili ya kweli and the church did not just keep the word of god but they confessed the Christ. Kanisa halikutunza tu neno la Mungu pia waliweza kumkiri Kristo and they had the zeal of missionary work na wakawa na amu ya kufanya kazi ya kimisionari they took the word of god and the ministry of god seriously walichukulia neno la mungu na huduma wa mungu katika kumaanisha they committed themselves to the work of god and separated themselves from every defilement wali walijitolea hasa kwa kasi ya mungu na kukaa mbali na unaji ya mauchafu wote and they refused the word corruption and maintained ten their holiness wakakatane na ufisadi na wakatunza ule utakatifu and so jehovah is saying nae jehovah hapa anasema i will keep you safe at the hour of temptation nitawafanya ninyi kuwa salama masaa haya ya majaribu we shall come upon all the world ambaye atakuja katika dunia nzima to try them that dwell upon the earth kuwajaribu wao waka katika dunia the hour is coming masaya nakuja when temptation will arise majaribu yatakapoinuka but the church that trusted the lord lakini kanisa lilo muaminia mungu the church of philadelphia kanisa la philadelphia i said philadelphia means the love brotherly love nilisema philadelphia inamaanisha upendo ule wa kindugu the brotherly love upendo wa kindugu where is the love of god in the church basi upendo wa mungu Mungu uko wapi kanisani leo? Where is the love of God among the brothers? Upendo wa Mungu uko wapi katikati ya wapendwa? That when I preach, ya kwamba ninapohubiri, and you preach, nawe unahubiri. We are not preaching to fight one another. Basi hatuhubiri kupigana moja kwa mwingine. We are not trying to compete. Hatushindani. But we are building one kingdom of Jehovah. Lakini tunachofanya ni kujenga ufalme mmoja wa Jehovah Mungu. Where is the brotherly love? Basi wewe upendo wa kiundugu kwa wapi that when i see you preaching i love what you are doing kwamba ninapokuona ukihubiri napenda unachofanya bible says biblia inasema how can you say you love god kwamba utasema vipi wampenda mungu and you hate the brother that you see nawe unachukia ndugu naemuona then the love of god is not in basi upendo wa mungu haumo ndani yako the church of philadelphia kanisa la philadelphia it was a church of brotherhood love lilikuwa ni kanisa lililo na upendo wa kindugu The love should control the church. Basi upendo unapaswa ukaweze elekeza kanisa. Why do we hate one another when we come to one church? Kwa nini tunachukiana moja kwa mwingine na tunaenda kanisa moja? I cannot greet this brother but we are in the same church. Siwezi salimiana na huyu mpendwa na tuko kanisa moja. I cannot greet this pastor and yet we are serving one one God. Siwezi msalimia huyu mchungaji lakini tunamtumikia Mungu mmoja. The church has lost the first love. Kanisa lime tesa ule upendo wa kwanza there is the true love of god kuna upendo wa kweli wa mungu the unconditional love of god upendo usio na kipimo chochote that unconditional love is what jesus said basi wewe upendo usio na kizuizi ndiye mungu anazungumzia love your enemies mpende adui yako as you love yourself kama jizu unavyojipenda mwenyewe you cannot love your enemy uwezi mpenda adui with your human love na upendo ndo wako kiwanadamu you are human love is limited upendo wako kiwanadamu umepimiwa but when you gain an unconditional love lakini utakapopata upendo wa usio na kipimo agape upendo wa agape that is the love huo ndio upendo that 
covers everything and gives you ability to love Philadelphia, Philadelphia the brotherly love the church of brotherhood when we say we are brothers let us love one another let us walk as the children that share one DNA basi tutembee kama watoto ambao wanashiriki damu moja Jesus told the disciples while he was preparing to leave Yesu anawaambia wanafunzi alipokuwa anajiandaa kuondoka and he said this will be your mark anasema hii itakuwa ni alama yenu He said anasema love one another kwamba mpende mmoja kwa mwingine that the world may know that I am the one who sent you Haleluya ili ulimwengu mzima ukajue mimi ndimi niliyewatuma ninyi So when the world sees we love one another Hivyo dunia itakapoona tunapendana It is an evidence of John 17 that the Lord has truly sent us Basi ni ushahidi tosha katika Yohana 17 kwamba ni Bwana ndiye alitutuma In from verse 20 onwards you can see that Yohana mlango wa 17 mstari wa 20 kuteremka utaona haya Shalom Amani I was still writing man of God John 17 Let me finish Downwards Praise the Lord Hey I don't know even what to say Praise Jesus The word of God is quick and powerful Hallelujah Sijui kama umesikia vile nimesikia na nina jambo moja kwa Nyokonyo Studios I think next week Pastor a stop kidogo hata sisi tuendelee kidogo kumsema tafadhali Eh hey. Yesu Kristo Ila si yeye anayenena bali ni Bwana Mungu ndani yake and i have received man of god i thank god because yes i have friends they fear to send messages perhaps in facebook but people are sending messages through my personal account about the messenger ninawapata na nashukuru mungu because you are responding well that the word of god is powerful and quick that is what i have for every one of us that the word of god is quick and powerful than a two edged sword it pierces it divides the soul and the spirit even the marrow oh my god help us jesus umeongea mambo mengi mpaka na roho wa mungu ameongea si wewe umeongea i'm sorry to say so Roho Mungu ametupatia ame ufunuo ama upambanusi wa neno la Mungu jioni ya leo mpaka nashindwa ni sema nini The revelation is already given because the word of God itself is a mystery for you to understand Kumtambua Yesu we sio nyama na damu natangaza ni ufunuo kutoka nao na Mungu Eh hey. Yes. It's a mystery the word itself. You want to say something? Hallelujah. You know I respect him. Nikiona anainua kichwa naona ni kama tena anataka kurusha bomb. Hey, Jesus. Pastor. Wednesday tafadhali <laughs> naomba tupewe platform kuna kitu nataka kusema kuhusu mtumishi wa Mungu na siezi sema akiwa nataka akae nyumbani Wednesday hata sisi tuongee maana kama mtu hawezi kupokea hili neno wacha nikwambie oh wakati nimekuwa kwa maombi mchana nilienda kazi kidogo na nikarudi maombi nilipoketi kwa maombi mchana nikapata ya kwamba kuna kitu Mungu alinisungumzia 
Hata ambapo nilikuwa nimekaa nikiomba. Wakati umefika ambapo ulimwengu lazima ujue neno. Lazima ujue neno. You have to know the word because the word is a mystery. Not every preacher has the word. The word is a mystery. We need the spirit of God to enlighten it to us. We need the deeper insight. We need to launch into the deep for us to understand the word. Healing is a mystery. So you to pokea and then you go that you have received my sister. Seek to know the mystery of healing. Faith is a mystery. To me. Kwa tunaambiwa amini. Na tunaenda kama tumeamini. Na tena ndiyo tunaenda kukutana na mambo ambayo kweli anaweza kututoa katika imani ya Kristo. Hey. Unakutana na ndugu anasema nimeokoka ndio laki anaongeza lakini mbona hili halitendeki? Na mchungaji alikwambia amini. Faith is a mystery. I thank God because of Nyokonyo Studios. Na nashukuru Mungu kwa sababu naona kwa messenger sitasoma na sitawaambia sitasema majina yenu. Lakini wale wanasema pray for me. Oh, huyu anataka cheo kazini. It's a mystery my brother for you to get that elevation. It's a mystery, but it's there. You can get it. You can find it if you want. Praise the Lord. Unaweza ipata. I, I'm afraid to say lakini unaweza ipata sio kwa kutuma alafu mtumisha kupatie sijui kama unanielewa lakini naamini wanaelewa they understand yes sio kiasi fulani ili mtumishi wa Mungu tunasema bado tuko hapa ma pastors tukuwekele mikono toa sadaka kiwango fulani posa upa it's a mystery my brother and you will receive it for free hallelujah after receiving the enlightenment of God's word. My God. Unataka cheo kazini. Kiko, follow the word of God. You will receive. Hallelujah. Eh, na watu wameamua tu kutuma kwa messenger. Mungu awabariki. Wanasema wanataka kuombewa. Wanataka vyeo wanasema it's powerful kwa messenger naona mambo makubwa kanisa liko wapi namba 10 iko wapi namba 10 iko mahali hapa Nairobi my sister Jen namba 10 iko on your way to Huruma kupita gate ya air force shuka hapo namba 10 i thank god man of god i have so many things to 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 sort hey, i have so many I don't know. Questions to ask na sijui nianzie wapi. Kuna dada mmoja ametuma na akasema ya kwamba ametuma message I think kwa Facebook anasema ya kwamba oh, we need to understand. Na hata mimi nikapata ya kwamba I had noted it that the boundaries about the boundaries you talked about the boundaries. Not the boundaries of churches. Perhaps kama utatufunulia kidogo ya kwamba oh, oh, the word of God will make us to go beyond the boundaries. Unajua kama unasema boundaries juu mimi tangia ni kuwe msichana nilikuwa nikiingia kanisani pastor akuaita mani kondoo yake iende i, kwa kanisa lingine kukula huko nyasi tulikuwa tunafungiwa kwa church hatutoki so she spoke about the boundaries to go beyond what uh, what we mean by boundaries is one thing tunachomaanisha hapa na mipaka kwenda zaidi ya mipaka ni jambo moja a boundary is something that is said to divide nations. Ah, uh, mipaka ni kitu ambacho kimeekwa kwa sababu ya kugawanya mataifa. To differentiate our families. Kutofautisha jamii zetu. And other things. Na mambo mengine. When we talk about boundaries in the spiritual life. Ah, uh, tunaposungumza kuhusu mipaka katika hali ya kiroho. We are saying that the grace of God will take you to more different levels from 
where you are not able to do by your own strength. Tunapojaribu tunachojaribu kusema hapo ni kuwa neema ya Mungu itakuchukua itakupeleka viwango zaidi ambazo wewe hukua umevifikia atakufikisha. When I go to Uganda I've crossed the boundary. Ninapoenda katika inchi jirani ya Uganda nimevuga mpaka The limit that says this is the boundary of Kenya and Kenya stops here I have gone beyond of because of the grace. Basi mpaka unaosema hapa ndio mwisho wa Kenya na hapa ndio mwanzo wa Uganda nimevuga pale na nimeenda zaidi ya hiyo. It takes you beyond Africa. Inakupeleka zaidi ya Afrika. So we have people who have been limited in what they are doing but the grace of God is going to make a breakthrough and an opening beyond. Kuna watu ambao wamekuwa napimiwa kwa vitu ambavyo wamekuwa navifanya lakini hapa neema ya Mungu itakuja kuwachukua na kuwapeleka zaidi ya kula ambako Mungu aweza kufika. To do things that even your parents, even your brothers, hey. even the people in church have never done it but the grace is taking you beyond. Kuja hapa sasa unafanya vitu ambazo wazazi wako, jamii yako, kanisa lako halijafanya lakini wewe kwa neema ya Mungu unakuja kufanya zaidi ya hayo. God has not called you to become a prophet only in your church. Mungu hapajakuita ufanyike tu nabii katika kanisa hilo lako peke yake. Like here is river of life you are not being a uh, The, the, the servant of river of life but to everybody that God will send you to Kama hapa tuko river of life basi Mungu hajakuita tu river of life peke yake lakini atakupitisha zaidi ili ufike mahali amekuitia We have so many people outside there who are suffering and God can decide to use you to go beyond Basi pana watu wengi sana pale nje ambao wanateseka na kusumbuka lakini Mungu anaweza fanya maamusi ya kukupeleka pale nje uende ukawafikie na uende zaidi That is why he said see I have made a door open before you Ndiyo sababu ananakili akisema ona nimeeka mlango ulio wasi mbele zako So many opportunities Basi tunuku zilizo nyingi And it's up to you how you will use it Na ni juu yako vile utavitumia Amen Amina Hallelujah so we understand going beyond boundaries. Katika jina la Yesu Kristo Mungu awabariki na zaidi na zaidi. Kuna comment moja natafuta mtu hapa. Ametaka maombi. Praise God Pastor Mary I am Doris from Gilgil please pray for me. I have that spirit. I have that spirit in that whenever I get money I plan to do something but after getting the money nothing i do ni vile hizo pesa huisha sijui so we are going to pray for you thank you so much man of god umetufundisha about the church of philadelphia and that is me and you na vile tumekuwa katika maombi i'm believing god ya kwamba unaenda kuwa kama hilo kanisa do not despise what god is doing in you soon God is going to unveil greatness in you. Anasema kwamba I'm going to take that dark covering from my people. I'm going to make a feast of fat. Hey, Yesu Kristo. Neno lako jamani tukilipata si linatofanya uenda wazimu wa kiroho. Hallelujah. Nashukuru Mwenyezi Mungu. So man of God and men of God, we thank God kwa sababu ya upendo wake you have talked about brotherly love that is philadelphia brotherly love eh hey, pasta pasta ombe adui yako pasta adui pasta eh hey, pray for your enemy suffer no enemy to live pasta hallelujah you know i fear sometimes to speak even the word of god before you because i know utanijibu kulingana na hilo neno na utakuja direct suffer no witch oh that is a witch not an enemy okay we need to pray for our enemies and suffer no witches to live or pray also for the witches 
Yes, have your microphone, please. Everybody, we need to pray for everybody. God is not pleased when a sinner dies. Mungu hapendezi yes. But we pray that our prayer, the prayer of saints does not save sinners. Tunaomba. Na ukumbuke, maombi ya waumini haya ukui watendadhambi. But we pray that they, 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 they make the decision of accepting the gospel of salvation. Lakini maombi yetu ni kuwa wafanya maamusi ya kumbuke because if they believe the gospel of salvation that is when they will be born again so no matter how many years the church can live at one particular place praying for the sinners no one will be saved even one Kwa hivyo bila kujali kwamba ni wakati upi kanisa litachukua likiombea watenda dhambi hapana hata mmoja atakayeokolewa But until one person comes out of that prayer session and preaches the word to the sinner that is the power to save them Basi hadi mtu ajitokeze katika lile kundi na aanze kuhubiri injili kwa wale watenda dhambi hapo ndipo Mtu anaweza pokea neema ya uokovu. That is what carries the power of salvation. Na hiyo ndio inabeba nguvu ya uokovu. In Romans 1:16 Paul was saying I am not ashamed for the gospel. Na Warumi 1:16 Paulo ananakila anasema mimi sitaiaibikia injili. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Hallelujah. Maana ni nguvu za Mungu katika uokovu. First to the Jewish and then to the Gentile. Kwanza kwa Yahudi na kwa mataifa. That is the power. Hiyo ni nguvu. The gospel carries power of salvation when it's believed. Injili ya Mungu imebeba nguvu za uokovu, za uokovu wakati hiyo injili inaaminiwa. I had one day a certain pastor on television telling his members that go and write all the names of your enemies and come with those names I want to burn your enemies and they will perish. Siku moja nikamsikia muhubiri moja akihubiri katika television na akasema kwamba kwenda nyumbani ukanakili majina ya maadui wako wote na uje na hayo majina ya maadui wako nataka kuwaombea ili wakaweze ku, 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 kuteketeza kuteketezwa na wakaweze kuangamia that is wrong ni mbaya. That is wrong. Mbaya hiyo. And I cannot lead people to do that. Na siwezi ngoja kuona watu wakifanya hiyo. That is what John wanted God to do to Nineveh. Basi hivyo ndivyo mawazo ya Yohana ya, ya Jonah yalivyokuwa ili Mungu afanye kwa watu wa ninawi. But he never knew God is merciful. Na hakujua yeye kwamba Mungu ni mwenye huruma. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Sikumbuki kama hata mimi niliandika. <laughs> I don't know. No, kwa church yetu wako wanafundisha kuandika majina ya maadui. If it's your church, it is wrong. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> you know one day my theology teacher told asked me, who made you to be a pastor? <laughs> Who made you to be a pastor? Ili uweze kuwa unasikia haya na kuyabeba. You know, uh, pastors, they have a very great task. Kubeba injili ya kweli. Usiongeze, usipunguze. Usidanganye. Usiweke mawazo yako. So wakati ule tunukotu tunauliza na maswali na mwalimu. Kanembia nani ya likufanya kuwa mchungaji? Hey. Kwa sababu, usiongeze na usipunguze na usifanye kulingana na mawazo yako ya kwamba adui anafaa kuchomeka kwa hivyo andika majina yao nani alisema waandike kwa biblia oh ninaweza labda kuwa kama watchman Ezekiel just to sound an alarm that enemy is coming so be watchful that is what we are supposed to do warn people leading the, the sheep of the Lord astray. Tuta ukumiwa. Hey, ole wetu wachungaji. Mungu watu same. Na alitie neno lake la kweli ndani mwetu. Pendwa hili neno I've told you the word of God is quick. 
linaenda kwa kazi and it is powerful hautaweza kulishinda neno la Mungu hatutaweza mpendwa hata uhubiri namna gani you cannot go beyond the word of god hautapita tutahubiri tupite mpaka ya Uganda tupite Tanzania lakini hatuwezi tukapita neno la Bwana ndio litasimama peke yake na ndio litatoa hukumu kwa kila nafsi neno la Mwenyezi Mungu kwa hivyo nashukuru Mungu ya kwamba hapa katika Nyokonyo Studios tumeamua ni injili ya kweli mafuta yanayotoka mbinguni direct yanayovunja nira haleluya Mungu akubariki mtumishi wa Mungu Masaya nakimbia Ross na Njala anasema watumishi muombe mama yangu ni mgonjwa kuna mwenye ametaka cheo kuna mwenye mama yake ni mgonjwa taka ombewe. Kwa hivyo ni wakati wetu wa kuomba kwa sababu ya masaa. Hatutaki pia nyokonyo studios kuwatuambia kwamba tumemaliza muda wao. Mungu akaweze kutusaidia kwa sababu tunakimbizana na masaa. Hata katika kuihubiri nchini tunakimbizana na wakati ili watu waokolewe. Tusipoteze muda hata kidogo. Tuokoe muda. Watu wa Mungu waokolewe. Kwa hivyo watumishi wa Mungu nashukuru sana kwa kazi njema ambayo mnafanya katika studio hii lakini vile nimesema next week tafadhali tunaomba studios na uwe tayari pia kusema jambo wiki ijayo kwa sababu ya mtumishi wa Mungu kama amekuwa wa baraka kwako ili anapoendelea pia ajue ya kwamba watu wanatambua neno la Mungu ambalo Mungu ameweka ndani mwake sio kwamba tutakuwa tunamsengenya kwa mabaya tutakuwa tunasungumza kulingana na hili neno ambalo anatunenea na naamini ya kwamba labda tutakuwa zaidi ya wawili tunataka pia tupate mtu ambaye amekuwa akisikiliza nje pia yeye akuja aongea seme vile amekuwa akipokea hili neno la Mungu kutoka katika kinywa cha mtumishi is very devoted to do the work of God so be prepared with your comment concerning the man of God next Wednesday and God is going to bless you I believe you will be there he will not be there but you will be there amen hallelujah so mungu atu awabariki sana wale ambao wamekuwa pamoja nasi so we are going to sum up with a word of prayer from the man of God he's going to pray for the sick he's going to pray for those who need promotion and our brother also our pastor pastor johnston natamani ukue wednesday kwa sababu nataka watu wajue wewe ni pastor johnston hiyo wednesday yes tutakuwa ma pastors hiyo wednesday our overseer will not be around i'm just giving him a break because i want us to say something about him next wednesday Sema kitu kumuhusu Wednesday ijayo kama amekuwa baraka kwako mapasta ndio watakuwa hapa tutakuwa tunasungumza pia kwa neno la Mungu kidogo lakini sana tutaongea kuhusu baraka vile ambavyo mtumishi wa Mungu amekuwa wa baraka kwetu na pia wa baraka kwako na pia tutakuwa tunamwombea anasema kwamba pray for us Paul said pray for us also tuombeeni pia So we will be also praying for him. Amen. We will be speaking to God for him. Mungu amsaidie na amdilie mshika marefu kwenye studio zetu. Hallelujah. Mungu awabariki. Kwa hivyo wanakaribisha watumishi wa Mungu Pastor Johnston akaweze kuombea partners. They have done something today. We have received a blessing from our partners partners who are river of life huruma mungu ametubariki i just sita mention ametu wamefanya nini but i just want you to commit them before god and whosoever also that wants to partner with us our partners wanafanya mambo wanalipua lipua hii nyumba mpaka tunashanga ni kama wanataka kutusongesha mpaka kwa jirani 
partners who are river of life huruma. God bless you so much as the man of God is going to pray for you. Uh, nimeka, shinda hapa nikiwaombea. Kuna wale wako na biashara zao, wanafanya kazi, kuna wale wameajiriwa. God bless them all. Kuna wale bado hawana kazi and they want also a blessing from God. Na wamekuwa kijinyima, wanatoa kile kidogo ambacho wako nacho. Si nyinyi mnaona wale mko hapa. We thank God kwa wale ambao hawako mtaona siku nyingine tembelea studio za nyokonyo studios utaona baraka ambayo partners wanafanya mambo makubwa kwa hivyo utaombea partners wetu na pia wala ambao wanatuma sadaka zao wakati ambapo tunakuwa katika maubiri iwe ni haya ama morning glory ama services za sunday they are also still partnering with us and we thank God that is why we are here this far we say it's jehovah So na mtumishi wa Mungu utakabidhi mahitaji ya watu mikononi mwa Mungu na Mungu awe wa baraka na tuseme neema na tupate kuondoka. Mungu awabariki. Karibu mtumishi wa Mungu. Amen. Kwa jina la Yesu. Jina lenye nguvu. Jina lenye uweza. Jina lenye mamlaka. Jina tunalolitia. Bwana na tunapokea tunachohitaji. Oh Mungu jibuye ma- maombi. Tunakushukuru mfalme maana katika upendo wako na kwa kupitia neno hili ambalo Bwana watu wako walisikia na ukalitikia upendo wa kiundugu ukajengeka ndani yao na wakaishi ndani ya mioyo zao wenyewe bila kulasimika kwamba watasimama na huduma watasimama na mtumishi wako Mary na hivi leo Mungu wa majeshi kwa macho yangu nimeona kitendo kikuu ambacho wamekifanya kwa nyumba yako kwa sababu ya pendo hili Mungu nawe Bwana wa majeshi ukawashikie shirini ukawafikie katika hitaji lao Mungu mifuko zao sisije kaukiwa hiyo biashara naitisha wateja kutoka pembe zote nne za nchi wakaweze kumiminika katika hilo duka katika hizo vibanda katika biashara yake Mungu wa majeshi hata kazi ya mikono yao wale ambao wameajiriwa unawapatia neema neema pale kazini Mungu wewe Mungu wafahamie watu wako hautawaacha katika mateso pesa zao Mungu hazitatumika katika ubure wewe Mungu nakwenda kusimama na wao na kuwaepusha na kila aina ya balaa za maisha kila aina ya mikosi Mungu tunaziamrisha zikaweze kuachilia maisha yao katika jina la Yesu Mungu tunatangaza ya kwamba chochote watakachoshika kwa mikono yao Mungu wewe utakibariki na sasa ninaamrisha baraka juu yao naamrisha baraka kwenye hiyo biashara naamrisha baraka katika uzao wao naamrisha ufahamu kwa watoto wao watakapoenda shuleni Mungu watakuwa vichwa kwa sababu ya pando hili ambalo wazazi wao wamepanda katika madabau haya na hivyo ninaamrisha madabau haya yakanene katika maisha yao yakanene katika kazi yao yakanene katika afya yao katika jina la Yesu Kristo asante maana wewe ni Mungu na kwa vile wewe ni Mungu katika madhabahu haya Mungu utawapigania hawa watu wako utawatetea katika washitaki wao asante maana bwana wewe ni Mungu na tunakupa sifa zote na tunakubariki kwa sababu ya wale ambao bado wanakuja na wanatamani wafanyike ubaraka katika huduma huu bwana utukufu kakurudie ni kwa jina la Yesu Kristo tunaomba na hata kuamini amen father in the name of jesus we take this opportunity to thank you my father for this far and opportunity that lord we have in this studio of sharing this word to your people lord i pray that those people who have been listening to us they are going through so many challenges we have those people who are sick we have their family members that are sick oh lord 
how I pray that my father may you stretch your hand and touch all the sick people in the name of Jesus. Whatever condition they are in right now, Lord, you are able to deliver them. Heal them, O oh Lord. By your stripes, let them receive, my Father, your healing. Give them grace to overcome that challenge, O oh my Father. For you are able and God who is powerful in doing. Lord, I pray even for our brother who is looking for the promotion. Bible says, East or West, promotion comes from you. Lord, you are able to release that promotion. And I pray that if there is any hindrance, if there is any blockage, if there is anything that has been hindering his promotion, Lord, may you remove it in the name of Jesus Christ, that he may receive his promotion. Any spirit of delay and any manipulation, Father, we want to command that spirit of manipulation in the, in the name, name of Jesus, of Jesus Christ. Christ. We declare that, oh God, mm. you are going to make it done. Yes, in the Jesus. name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Father, we have so many people yes. that are trusting you because of so many things. Mm. Lord, may you hearken to their prayer Hallelujah. and answer them, oh Lord, yes. that they may give out the testimony that you are the Lord who has done it in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Through the, 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 the influence of this voice, yes. may you follow your word yes. and fulfill it, O Lord. Yes. Bless these studios and yes. bless each and everyone Hello. who has been standing together with this studio. May your will be done, O Lord, Hello. for it is in Jesus' mighty name I do pray and believe. Amen. 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 So we thank God. Lastly, I acknowledge the presence of our bishop. I can see him online. Papa Moses Simeo, God bless you so much as we wind up by a word of the grace. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love, love of, of God, God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit be, be with, with us, us now, now and, and forever forevermore. Amen. Amen. Shalom, shalom till we meet Amen. again next Wednesday. God bless you. Stay blessed in the presence of God. Amen.